But if you have a female friend who has a longer index finger and a shorter ring finger, you may think that she may be more likely to Good morning friends! In this video, for the first time on video, I'm going to tell you what your finger lengths say about your sexuality. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already, like the video and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. First of all, we're talking about your finger lengths, but not exactly their absolute length, but rather their relative length in regard to each other. In particular, we're talking about a ratio between your index finger and your ring finger. In particular, whether your index finger is shorter than your ring finger or your ring finger is longer than your index finger. As I mentioned in a previous video on neck sizes, this is one of the biggest predictors in our bodies about how much testosterone levels we were exposed to in our mother's wombs. This is called intrauterine androgenic signaling. Androgenic signaling is the signaling that happens at androgen receptors in response to androgens, which include testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, among others. The reason that testosterone levels are sort of equivalent to androgenic signaling across people is because testosterone is men's major androgenic hormone. And the signaling that it has that's distinguished from other hormones is at that specific receptor, the androgenic receptor. The reason that we can sort of sometimes interchangeably use the words testosterone for androgenic signaling is that we assume within a person their androgen levels are somewhat stable and usually in men at least testosterone is the most major androgenic hormone although dihydrotestosterone is also very important and made out of testosterone so it's correlated to testosterone levels the unique signaling of androgenic hormones like testosterone is unique because of their signaling at the androgen receptor and therefore we're talking about androgenic signaling when we sometimes say testosterone levels anyway what we're talking about here is the 2D second digit to fourth digit ratio. That's your ratio of your index finger to your ring finger. A ratio is when you take one number and divide it by another. So here we're dividing the length of your index finger by your ring finger. Next, we have to mention the broad finding of the research. The 2D to 4D ratio is smaller in men on average. This means that in men, their index fingers are a bit shorter than their ring fingers as compared to women. Women generally have longer index fingers and shorter ring fingers, such that their ratios the 2D to 4D ratio is bigger generally in women and lower generally in men. Although there's variance between men and women, which is what we're going to talk about today. First of all, let's talk about gender dysphoria or transsexuality. We're talking about men who were boys in their mother's wombs, but later in life feel as if they are girls or ladies and or want to become girls or ladies. And we're talking about the reverse, which is women who were girls in their mother's wombs, but feel like boys or men later in life and want to become boys or men later in life. Now, now, historically, it was thought that having higher testosterone levels in the womb among girls would make them predisposed to want to become transsexuals, the opposite kind of signaling. Whereas in boys, it was thought that testosterone levels in the womb, when they were lower, predisposed boys to want to become transsexuals as well. Now here, I want to review three papers that were published in 2020 and haven't been very much cited. So I'm quite sure this is the first time this discussion is happening on video. Now, honestly, for me, this trans women and trans men thing is a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna say male to female or female to male transsexuals. Now, an Iranian study using over a thousand transsexuals confirmed these hypotheses. It found that in male to female transsexuals, their digits were feminized originally, such that they had higher 2D to 4D ratios. On the other hand, it confirmed also that in female to male transsexuals, their digits were masculinized. That means they had lower ratios. This indicates that androgenic signaling in the womb can predispose children toward gender dysphoria later in life and in a directional manner as we would expect. However, two other studies in 2020 found the opposite they found that only in male to female transsexuals were the digits feminized, whereas in female to male transsexuals, the digits were not unusual and could not predict their gender dysphoria. If these other two studies are correct, and we don't know yet because what we require really is an exhaustive meta-analysis and more data. In fact, there was a recent paper calling for more research in the field in particular to determine why the relationship was not bidirectional. But in either case, if the last two papers were correct, this would indicate to us that a mother's androgenic signaling in the womb 
affects boys that are born boys originally and their gender dysphoria more than girls, such that having differential androgenic signaling in a mother's womb may more predispose boys rather than girls toward gender dysphoria. In either case, there's conflicting evidence and what we do know for sure is that it appears that a mother's androgenic signaling while she has her baby in the womb determines gender dysphoria to some degree later in life. Now the original research on this subject was done on homosexuality in the late 90s. In particular, academics wanted to know whether you could predict a person's sexuality according to their 2D to 4D ratio. Originally, the research indicated that you could. However, a recent meta-analysis shows that it's more predictive in female non-heterosexuals, meaning you can more predict a woman's bisexuality or homosexuality by her having a lower 2D to 4D ratio, a more masculine one, whereas this relationship is not as strong among men, among gay men. To learn more about this relationship, let's take a very interesting study from twins with discordant sexualities, where one twin is gay or bisexual and the other isn't. And this is interesting because twins have the same genetics. One of the major varying factors among twins is their experience in the womb. So so one twin may have had higher androgenic signaling in the womb than the other twin. Now in this study, among 18 pairs of female twins, the 2D to 4D ratio was predictive of homosexuality or bisexuality, in that the bisexual or homosexual female twins were more likely to have lower ratios, smaller index fingers compared to their ring fingers, more masculine ratios than their sisters. But contrary to expectations, among the 14 pairs of male twins, the ratio was not significantly associated with bisexuality or homosexuality, confirming the earlier meta-analysis. So, so far we see that the ratio is very predictive for homosexuality among women, but not so much among men. Is this completely true? Well, there is some conflicting evidence, but in men it appears to be the case that there is a U-shaped curve such that very low androgenic signaling in the womb predisposes men towards being homosexual, whereas also very high levels of androgenic signaling can also predispose men towards homosexuality. But the kind of homosexuality is a bit different. The men that had very low androgenic signaling tend to be, and I have to be politically correct here, so I'm going to use the word bottom. They tend to be, they want to be on the receiving end of sexual experiences. Whereas the men with very high androgenic signaling, if they are homosexual, tend to be on the giving end or the top end of homosexual experiences. This is also true among rodents, even by just increasing the androgen receptor density or increasing testosterone levels through exogenous supplementation, for example, rodents will become more likely to be homosexual at higher levels, but they'll maintain the male pattern behavior that that sexuality entails. Whereas at very low levels of androgenic signaling, rodents will also be predisposed toward homosexual behavior, but at that level, they will be more likely to take the traditionally female role in sexual relationships. And finally, a fascinating paper from 2021 confirmed these findings. Among homosexual men, the men with the more masculine 2D to 4D ratios, that means shorter index fingers, lower ratios, were more likely to be tops or on the giving end. Whereas in homosexual men, those with higher 2D to 4D ratios, longer index fingers and shorter ring fingers, were more likely to be what in this paper is called receptive or on the receiving end of sexual relations rather than in this paper what they called the insertive end. So what are the key takeaways from this? Well, first of all, your finger length ratio is a good proxy for how much androgenic exposure you had in your mother's womb, where a lower ratio indicates more androgenic exposure in the womb. Second, a lower ratio, that means a shorter index finger and a longer ring finger, a more masculine ratio, is strongly associated with female to male transsexuality and female bisexuality and homosexuality. And finally, third, in men, androgenic signaling in the womb has a U-shaped effect, such that very low levels are associated with a certain role in homosexual relationships and very high levels are associated with the opposite role in homosexual relationship where bottoms or receivers have lower levels of androgenic signaling in the womb and tops tend to have higher levels of androgenic signaling in the womb and by the way also i didn't mention this earlier but lower levels of androgenic signaling in the womb are associated with among homosexual men more gender non-conformity such that those bottoms at one end of the u-shaped curve act more feminine or identify as being more gender non-conforming than the tops who identify more as being gender conforming but homosexual. But what are the practical takeaways? Well, this doesn't hold for everyone, but if you have a female friend who has a longer index finger and a shorter ring
ring finger, you may think that she may be more likely to be bisexual or homosexual and may be more likely to potentially identify in some way as masculine. Whereas if you have a male friend who has an unusually long index finger compared to their ring finger, they may be more likely to identify as bisexual or homosexual and may be more likely to experience some gender dysphoria and potentially some interest in transsexuality. Anyway friends, I found this very interesting. I hope you did too. It's the first video I think made on the subject, particularly in relation to roles among homosexuals for sure. So I'm very happy I was able to bring you new content that hasn't been seen elsewhere before on video. I look forward to seeing you this afternoon.